Hey everybody, my name is Kara Brown, I'm an urban fantasy author, and I am here today to talk to you about Wave Maker cards. First thing I'd like to do is apologize for not having my video up on Monday. Um, I just had a lot of stuff going on with work. I was going back and forth between a customer service representative and basically trying to fix a problem that we were having, and by the time I finished it, I was just brain dead. I couldn't, I couldn't go through the articles to share with you, but I will do that on this coming Monday. Now, in my entire writing journey, there has been one thing that I'm always looking for, and it's kind of like the perfect writing program. The, the program that is perfect for me and my needs and I have tried a lot of writing programs just to figure it out. You know, I've tried things like uh, like the writer, writerly? I've tried writerly, I've tried novella, I've tried dabble, I've tried scrivener, I have tried just google docs, I've tried working solely in word, I have tried a lot of different things and I've always been kind of semi disappointed with a lot of it but I had a colleague recommend a program to me and I've tried it and I like it a lot. So Wavemaker is a free writing and planning tool made by Ian Wood out in England. He basically was trying to create a software that was suiting his writing needs at the time and this is what he made. And he has basically offered this out to everybody for free. Um, and the only thing that he asked for are just donations. So if you really like it and you want to donate, you know, basically go for it. But he's, he's made such an amazing tool and I really feel like it needs to get more visibility so we're going to talk about it today. But, we're not going to talk about it here, we're going to go ahead and switch to my computer screen now. Okay, so when you open up WaveMaker either in the web app or on your actual computer app, you're going to see pretty much a screen that looks just like this. Mine is populated with projects because that's what I'm currently working on. Now the really nice thing that I really like about WaveMaker um, is the fact that it syncs up to the Google Drive. Um, I'm obviously I drank the Google Kool-Aid a long time ago, but this this is a really big lifesaver because I am not always in one place and I'm usually on a couple different devices so being able to take my work with me wherever I go is really useful um, now you have the sync up option basically syncing up means that you're sending it to the cloud and then the sync down is telling the cloud to bring uh, whatever is up in there down now if you are like me and you do work from multiple devices you need to make sure that you're syncing up everything or you're basically gonna have that data cache on your one computer and it's not going to transfer over so well, let's go ahead and we will start with making a project now, obviously to make a project, you just sit here and you click make project. And we, let's see, in the last video I did, the lovers, and again I'm using underscores because the space button changes everything. Um, and when, so the really other nice thing is that there's already some templates that are set up. So if you are somebody who uses save the cat theme, um, or you like to use the three act structure that's in there as well. Um, I've eyeballed the better novel project. That's kind of like a, a YA development, that's, but it's still a good tool. And then the manuscript shutter, um, I think that has to do with just making sure that you're writing every day. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll use the three act structure just for the sake of doing this. So you do that and click create project and voila. So what we have right now is a setup template that is in pretty much the three act structure. So of course your introduction, the inciting incident, so on and so forth. Now you can come in here and you can type away, type, type, type. Now if you've used Scrivener and you know how it works where you basically can come in here and type whatever you want and let's say that you know stuff in chapter one isn't actually working out the way you thought it would and you think it belongs better in where chapter two is, you can move and drop it just like I did there. Um, obviously the downside is that you can't, you know, the, the chapters don't automatically renumber themselves in this setup right here, but if that's not a problem for you, that's not a problem. Um, and of course, like if you're somebody who like needs to have scenes in their chapters, um, right here where it says um, add child, that adds a sub document in here for you. And you can type, type, type to your little heart's content and it will just still be in part of that. Now, if you click on this, it's not gonna show what's in that document, but when you download it, it's gonna be seen in there. Um, and again, like let's say that you wrote a scene and you're like, eh, that scene belongs better down here. You can just drag it and now it's moved. Uh, you can add chapters pretty easily. Um, so again, the add child makes a subcategory in whatever you're working on, but a add sibling, we'll add one that's pretty much just like in the identical indention that you see right here. And that's pretty nice, I really do like that. Um, just the fact that you can collapse stuff like this is really useful for me, especially if you know you write like a bajillion words like I do and then you have to edit them all out. But yeah, just, just, the, just the flexibility of this program is really good. This is basically the thing that really got me into loving Scrivener. Um, but of course, it's a simplified version, but I really like it a lot. 
Now the formatting in this is not anything spectacular. Um, it's 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 a very simple get the words out program. It's not there to like get like extra fancy with the font or anything like that. But you can do a couple of things like the bold and the italics. Uh, there's some headings. So obviously you got your main heading, your subheading, and then your ultra small heading. And right here, if you need a new paragraph indent, it will do that too. It does it does a lot of different things. Um, but it's not going to be like if you're looking for the bells and whistles that Word um, or Google have, you're not going to find it here. This this program is basically meant for like get your book written. Now, one thing I am going to draw your attention to is right up here in manuscript settings where you can come in here and you can see kind of like the overall settings for however you want your manuscript to work. Right here is going to be your current word count. It's not going to track your word count over time if that's something that you're into. Uh, right here, this is the default font. If you want to change it, you can change it to whatever you want. Um, I haven't found a font that's not in here yet, but I usually just stick with like, you know, like pretty much either Times New Roman or something else that's easy to read or type with. Uh, alignment you know either left center right justified however you like to do that font size these fonts do get pretty big and pretty small I stick with standard because it just you know it's it's gonna look different when you turn it into a word document uh, same thing with line spacing it's pretty much all here um, now if you do change the setting for whatever reason like if you want full width you know, or you want something else just make sure that whatever you do you hit the save because it's not going to save it automatically. You do have to hit these buttons. Also, if you like, if you wanted to change the title, same thing. You got to come up here and you have to hit save. Now, let me show you uh, some of these tools that are in here. So we'll start with the database cards. Database cards are pretty much where you put any information that's pertaining to your story. You can upload pictures and you can put a hashtag for easy search. There is a search option right here where you can go ahead and do that. Now one thing I do know about the images is that the uh, the upload quality is not very good so if you are trying to get like some kind of high def picture to store for later this is not the way that I would recommend that you do that. This is literally just a visual representation for you to kind of like you know put all your ideas in one place. Um, after that snowflake tool if you are a fan of the snowflake method it works pretty well. Let me see words. Words. And then you hit this little button right here and then you have three cards and then words and more words now if you actually ended up having like two ideas or more you can delete this card um, and uh, so the snowflake method pretty much works how you think it does you put like a simple idea right here you hit this little snowflake tool and then you have three more cards and then you fill that out and then you're you can pretty much just go to town on that I'm not gonna get super high depth into how this works just because the creator made a video about how this works and I'm gonna link all those down below so that way you can watch them if you really want to I just want to kind of show you guys the other features that are in here uh, planning board okay so I really actually like this a lot because the planning board has the ability to give you the little cards that are in here that you can use for pretty much anything. Um, I'm just going to throw a couple random ones in here um, just so that way I can show you something that I actually really like about this. So that's a character card. Um, yeah, and so you got character theme, plot scene, if you do scene outlines and all that, um, we'll make that yell. Now the really awesome thing is that you come in here and you put them in here however you decide to set it up. But then when you come back to the writing thing right here, you click on this. And those little cards are going to show up right here. So if you have to write little notes for yourself, this is where you're going to do it. And then the other nice thing is that you can just put it right there as well. I mean, I, the, I, I absolutely love this feature. It's my favorite. And speaking of features that I really like, I really like um, the distraction free me mode on this. It's, yeah, this is, I use this all the time just because if there's too much going on on the screens, I get distracted easily. So having that there is really nice. Um, and then, but you don't have to worry because like, let's say that you write a scene card right here, but it actually has to go right here. You can just very easily move it over. It's just, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I really like it a lot. All right, after this is the grid planning tool. This is kind of modeled after the JK Rowling thing um, and uh, not method that I use very, very frequently, but the way it works is like, let's say that, hmm, okay, let me set this up and then I'll tell you how it works. Okay, so I went and since this is kind of modeling the JK Rowling thing, I went and kind of set it up in a JK Rowling sort of way. Obviously, I left the plot stuff out because if you haven't read the books, I don't want you to crucify me for spoiling stuff. Um, but so you can set this up pretty much any way. The way that I've seen it done is that, you know, obviously you can have the number of chapters right here. You can have the title of it and the stuff that's going on. I've also seen it where people will have like the character right here uh, where the numbers are and then kind of like the different plot points that are going on. 
But this, this grid thing is actually really versatile. I like it a lot. And of course, one of the nice things is that you can come in here and you can add as many cards into something that you want. Or if you decide that a card doesn't belong in a certain place, like let's say that this card needed to go over here, well, you can move it right um, and there's a lot of other features that go on with this but um, I, I don't use this a lot to be able to kind of explain it very efficiently but I do like it as a plotting tool and I have used it for that just to kind of get like my thoughts in order so it's really it's really good about that now um, let's talk about mind maps a little bit all right so I think the best way to kind of explain this again is just by having a pre-made examples now the way that the mind map works is that you basically put all your thoughts and then you can organize them however you want you can either do it like in chronological order um, you can set it up in like categories you can pretty much do whatever you want and you can type as much as you want in these two these are really small but again there's just there's no end to any of this and it's just it's really easy to use uh, now there are pictures that you can put up here too for your mind map if that's something that you need um, again I just want to remind you guys that the whole resolution thing needs to be low so don't put any like super mega files in here and you can either include a link to it or you can upload it you can pretty much do whatever you want and then you can also have multiple in here so you can have one mind map for like you know let's say that you wanted to do one for like Harry Potter stuff or you can do one for like your romance novel that you've got coming out um, all that stuff and you can categorize it it's really easy and of course like let's say you start a, a mind map and you're like eh, you know this isn't working out as well as I thought it was you just go over here and you delete it say yes it's gone so that's pretty nice and I like that a lot now the one thing I do really like is this timeline tool that comes in here and Okay, so the timeline tool doesn't come set up this way. Uh, this is typically what I do um, because I try to track what's going on in the course of one day in my story because obviously I have a lot of things that are going on. But the big reason is just to help me kind of like make that transition to when time is passing. It's just one of those, those it's not a thing that I have an issue with. I just want to make sure it's really clear about what's happening on which days. And this is pretty much how I do it. So I'll put a list of items in each of these to help me figure that out. But if you want to do this as like a chapter outline or a historical outline, outline or just anything it's it's really easy to use um, and I just I just really like this program so the one program or the one feature in this that I haven't actually used is the challenge mode I've never used this before um, and but it looks actually now I kind of want to um, and you can kind of do like a challenge where you it just it will only, oh man it only saves when you do oh man I've never done this I'm scared Oh my god, I'm just not reading this. I don't know if I want to use this. Um, if you're the type of person that needs pressure to uh, get your words done, you can do that. The whole like not saving thing makes me really nervous. But um, yeah, there's this nice challenge mode here if you just kind of want to do that to yourself. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to move on to the export document thing. Um, and of course, once you get done writing whatever it is that you're writing, you can export it. Um, I really do like this feature and all that comes with it. Uh, it's just being able just to kind of move your stuff around is really good. Now, I told you a lot of nice things about it. I have to tell you guys the stuff that makes me go, mm, whenever I work with this. Okay, so one of the things that I typically do is that when I am writing something, I go back and forth between whatever I'm writing my document in and and, and Google Docs. And the reason I do that is because my alpha readers, um, I have them basically come through here and they go and they make all the comments on the side and everything else. Now my big gripe about the Waymaker program, do you guys see how some of this is in italics and obviously some of it's not? Well, if I come in here and I want to cut and paste it back into the document, the format is lost, like it, it's gone. Which means that I have to go back in there and re-italicize everything. Um, now, now, if you're not a person that likes italics, that's not a problem, but my issue is that a lot of my characters, when they speak, they, they speak in italics because of, that's just, you have to read it to understand it. So having to go back and reformat like all the dialogue is a big like no-no for me. And I have tried, um, I have tried to put this in like Google, I've tried Google Docs, I've tried Word, I've tried everything. Whenever I cut and paste back into WaveMaker, that format is lost and it just, it drives me nuts. Um, but yeah, no, I really do like this program. And of course, like if you decide to get it and you need to know more about how any of those features work, the how to video guide right here, that's really, he's got all of them in there. And then if you keep a track on it, uh, anytime he comes out with something new, uh, like a new feature, he always makes a video 
Now, um, let's go ahead and go back to looking at my face. Okay, so that was pretty much like Wavemaker in a nutshell. Obviously, I didn't dive into a lot of details because Ian does it on his own channel. And again, I'm just going to link all those videos down below. Um, and again, if you lose those links and you've got the program, he's got the link in there. Um, it really, it's it's got a lot of good things for planning and writing. Now, I wouldn't use it for like the editing process, but that's not what it's designed to do. Obviously, this is the writing program that I chose and I kind of explained the reasons why I liked it. Um, if there's a writing program that you use, please feel free to talk about that down below just so that way people who come to the video can like check out and see what programs people are using and see if it works for them. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want me to do more like reviews of different writing softwares, leave a comment down below about which one that you would like me to do. Like I said, I've used most of them in my quest to find the perfect program just for me. So I kind of know the pros and cons of a lot of them and I'd be happy to kind of do like an overview for you. If I'm uh, gonna go ahead and close out, if you have not signed up for my newsletter, please feel free to. I've got some really awesome goodies that are coming out that I just can't wait to share with you. Um, I've typed up the newsletter, it's going in for approval. It's just, ah, I got, oh man, it's just so good. Um, and then don't forget to pre-order my book if you're looking for the Kindle version. I've got a link down to that below. It's coming out on August 9th. The paperbacks uh, pre-orders are going to come out really soon. I'm just waiting to get the final uh, read-through back so that way we can start do the formatting. And then once that's good, we're, we're going, guys. It's We're almost there. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys on Monday.